solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. Diving into your book, uh, David, um, your book talks about uh, a special type of relationship that you call exceptional. Um, and you say there are six hallmarks to an exceptional relationship. Can you sort of talk to us about what you mean by exceptional and uh, the six hallmarks? Yes. First of all, let me say that relationships are on a continuum. Uh, we have some that are uh, casual. We have some that are more, have deeper uh, a connection to them. We have some that are quite strong. Uh, we have those that are intimate. And at the upper end, we have those that we call exceptional. <clears throat> we say all relationships and certainly exceptional relationships have these six characteristics. The first one is, to what extent can I be myself? Uh, can I let you know, David, that's what, that that is relevant to our relationship. I don't share everything with you, but what do we need in order to, um, to build a connection? And also, can I not have to present an image, uh, present uh, something that I'm not, which I think is very relevant to, uh, certainly to teachers who do a lot of image uh, projection mm. and to leaders as well, who often walk around saying, if I'm to be a leader, I have to uh, present something other than I am. And so what we look at is to what extent can I let you know, David, in a relevant way? The second thing is, since we're talking about relationship, can I do things that help you be better known as you are? And we all do things that shut down other people. And can we be aware of that and not do that? And can we encourage the other person's also personal self-disclosure? Now, letting yourself be known, each of us, also means that we become vulnerable. We mm. uh, share some things that uh, the other might not approve of. So the third dimension is, um, can I trust that what I share won't be used against me? And that's, of course, relevant in organizations because information gets passed around quickly in organizations. I don't want to share something that's going to hurt my career or hurt my uh, effectiveness, mm -hmm. but also it relates to this relationship. Am I going to say something where you'll judge me negatively and may even reject me? Fourth dimension is, can we be honest with each other? Mm. And honesty isn't sharing everything, but it's sharing what is most important for us to relate and to do work together. And can you have confidence that what I'm telling you is what I really mean and what's most important? And you don't have to read between the lines. Fifth, any relationship, and I've been married 55 years, any relationship has glitches to it, has problems, has hmm. uh, disagreements, has even conflict. Uh, that's uh, true to all relationships. And uh, can we, in this relationship, raise those? Not only resolve them, but resolve them in a way that might deepen the relationship. And finally, hmm. we say, we find that relationships have the uh, quality of, are we committed to each other's growth and development? Uh, if I see you doing things or hurting yourself, am I committed enough to you that I will take the risk of saying that? Now, these six dimensions are also on a continuum. Hmm. And you don't have to be at the very top to be exceptional but you have to be high up on all of them to start to approach those. And the nice thing is about these six is they can give you a clue as to which ones you may want to work on to deepen the present relationships you have. Hmm. Hmm. And picking on one of the things that uh, caught my attention, as, as you said it, uh, David, you talk about resolving conflict in a way that deepens the relationship. Um, can, can you say more about uh, uh, what it takes to 
to to be able to resolve conflicts in a in a healthy way which which strengthens the relationship yes a, a lot depends on how the issue is raised so i want to go back to the whole thing of honesty mm-hmm. when i hear somebody say well i'm going to be brutally honest i find they're usually more brutal than they are honest <laughs> and uh this gets into how we define feedback mm. we could get into if you'd like to but we find that if you stick with behavioral feedback hmm. and I raise issues because I see this not as you being a bad person, but as this getting in the way of our working together, being friends together, and it's a sign that something is a little wrong. So the image we use is let's imagine you're driving to work and I know driving in India can do it. <laughs> quite challenging having been there. Uh, But let's assume that the uh, motor is sputtering a little bit and the steering is a little loose and the wheels seem to be thumping a bit. Mm -hmm. You don't say bad car, bad car. You say, hmm, something's wrong. I better get it worked on. Mm -hmm. And we have to have the same sort of orientation when there's a conflict. When there's a conflict, it's not that you're wrong or bad or I am. Something's getting in the way. And can we sit down jointly and try to figure this out? So that leads us into problem solving, not into blame or accusation. 